Yep, all yours. Okay. Nice. Yeah, lovely. It's an easy rifle to shoot, Nathan. It's a lovely rifle to shoot, isn't it? <laughs> Damn. G'day everyone. Uh, for the last year or so, I have been working with David Manson from Manson Reamers and also with the help of Grant Lovelock from uh, True Flight Barrels towards developing a new line of reamers. Now the purpose of these reamers is to make life easier for the, uh, the barrel maker and for the gunsmith who's fitting the barrel and for the end user. And by that what I mean to say is that um, the point of these is to provide non-finicky performance. Now too often when we uh, put a rifle together and the rifle doesn't behave so well it can be an immensely stressful time, um, especially for the barrel maker. Um, these guys, they really feel it and uh, it just it really knocks them around when they're trying to do their best to make you an accurate uh, rifle barrel, but then the, the lows just don't go so well. And um, in some cases, for example, the rifle might string and that could look like um, poor bedding or something like that. So we, then the blame can go backwards and forwards as to, you know, why the heck is this going on with the rifle? Now, over the years that I've been doing this research, um, I've come to the conclusion that um, sometimes the reamer is at fault. Um, just the actual design of it, not the actual execution. So um, as I went along, I experimented with um, different ideas there. And uh, those of you who have read my cartridges book, uh, you'll see um, in there, especially in the 306 section, how um, in, in that particular instance, I fluked onto a, um, a good design there. And so from those early lessons we, we built up and, um, and then brought about these new reamers. Now um, again for the smith it's the same deal. So as the gunsmith will put together a rifle and um, you know, he does his absolute best to get everything right and yet sometimes the rifle just won't behave. And then we have this to, a, to and fro from the, the gunsmith and the client where the gunsmith says oh, I've done my best and the client says no no it's, this is not right. And the gunsmith thinking that it's the, the client as far as whether he actually knows how to shoot straight or not, or whether um, he, he knows what he's doing with his hand loads. So there's always that suspicion there. And then from the end user's point of view, he's wondering did the gunsmith know what he was doing, or did the, um, the barrel maker, did they know what they were doing, where was this mistake? So we end up going around in these circles. So again that was the point of these uh, reamers was to clear all that up based on the experience that I had. So it's not theory, this is actually coming uh, from past lessons. So we've now got a, a new line of reamers. Um, we've got the 306, 280 um, Ackley Improved and, and the standard 280. Um, we've got the 306 Ackley Improved also. So we've got those standard cartridges there. And with those, the goal is um, to be able to use them for either target or um, general hunting or long range work, uh, long range hunting. So they're a universal design and then we've got our 7mm Remington Magnum Rima also and then um, on top of that is our 300 Winchester Magnum. Now with a 300 Winchester Magnum one of the major problems there is that the, the uh, projectiles are getting longer and longer. Now if, with the length of the current uh, chambers for the 300 Winchester Magnum it's actually becoming a bit of a joke. Uh, so what we've done there is we've shortened the, the overall length up a bit but without you uh, seeing any loss in power. So you'll still have the same, if not more, power than you had before with your 300 Winchester Magnum, but you'll have a shorter overall length, which means it'll, it'll fit nicer in the likes of the um, Winchester M70. It's a good fit for the uh, M700, which was just about running out of room. In fact, it was running out of room with the 225 grain ELDM. So we had to um, just bring that into a, a length that would actually work with these modern rifles. The Bagara is another example. Um, there's only so much we could do with the Winchester Magnum, it, it won't uh, suit the ticker rifle action, although it's not too bad in a ticker rifle um, with Accuracy International bottom metal and, and magazine. But um, that's uh, one way we've actually made that uh, cartridge a little more um, user friendly in that uh, you'll, you'll be able to load close to the lands, you'll get good accuracy and very high velocity. Now with the 306 and uh, 280 We've gone for a, um, a fairly long length, so in the 306 I wanted to get um, maximum power. So, so with a, a 208 grain bullet, we're looking at velocities of around 2700 feet per second. Now I'm not talking about theoretical velocities or what the rifle could actually be loaded up to. I'm talking about 
where the rifle is actually accurate and what you can actually physically use when you are using the rifle in the field. Now a lot of these rifles that are coming out now, they are capable of shooting um, up to 2800 feet per second, I'm talking about the WSM here, but they don't actually group that well and the guys can't use them at those speeds. So what we end up seeing is the guys shooting between 26 and 2700 feet per second. Now on this particular rifle, it will go just over 2700 feet per second, so it's a really, really good load. Um, the other thing we've done with the 280 is that um, we've, we've set um, a length which is kind of in the middle. So um, in the past, uh, some chambers were so long that you had the bullet seating uh, right out of the case neck, uh, and then it still had a bit of a spacewalk to get to the, to the lands. So some were just uh, ridiculously too long. In other instances, the, the chambers were, were so short that they weren't really um, making the, that full use of that uh, capacity. So what we've done is we've, we've picked a length which gives you the best of all worlds, um, but there will be some projectiles which will be seated out a bit into the case neck. Now, those projectiles, they'll still be seated a full calibre into the case neck, but there's just some projectiles we, we couldn't find that compromise for because it's just, it just won't do, it won't fit. Um, so in that case, they're still fine, but after um, a long period of successive reloads, uh, you may have a donut just at the base of the bullet. If you're using reading dies, it makes no difference because you won't seat that area of the neck anyway. Uh, so that's absolutely uh, no big deal whatsoever. Especially with the uh, 280 Ackley Improved, uh, that's a common combination in conjunction with uh, reading dies. So again, by having that projectile just out into the neck, and I'm only talking about 40 thou into the neck, um, the, the, uh, the sizing die, the neck sizing die, it actually won't seat that part or won't size that part of the neck anyway. So there's no loss there whatsoever. But the whole goal of this was to just get that length exactly right so that you could use a full range of bullets. In other words, you can use a heavy bullet and load it to full uh, potential, or you could use a lighter bullet um, or factory loads, and you're still you know, fairly close to the lands, you're, you're um, making the most of that case. So in each of these um, examples, with, with the entire um, a list of reamers, what we're doing here is we're going for maximum power, maximum accuracy, but also um, user friendliness. So that's what it's all about. So hopefully um, it'll help clear away some of the headaches for you guys. Now the particular rifle that I've got here today, just as an example, um, this is uh, just a plain Jane Remington 700, but to True Flight here, they have um, provided the barrel for me. Now True Flight, they have been helping um, us with this research all the way through. So I wanted to you know, test the effect of uh, the changes in, in the uh, chamber with these reamers and they were happy to actually help me out and supply these, um, these barrels. Now the reason for that is, of course is because it also helps them because when it comes time to actually uh, make a barrel and, and chamber it for someone, they also want to make sure that their customers are getting the best and they don't want any uh, headaches or things coming back on them which often happens within the industry. So I'm very, very grateful for True Flight for actually helping us out with this but also seeing it through the long haul. You know, it's been uh, over a year now and you, you know you test and you shoot and you wait and and it can actually get quite frustrating when you're, you're not seeing any return from these things so kudos to them for being so patient uh, with us during this process now also on this rifle I've got um, a stock made by Clive Judd I absolutely love the stock uh, some of you may have seen this in a previous video so I've actually um, taken and embedded it uh, for this action here and uh, it's just it's probably the very best stock I've ever used as far as um, rigidity. When I'm down behind the stock and um, lining it up on the target, it's just this, um, just no movement on the target. It's absolutely amazing how well Clive has done. Now this is one of the original prototypes. So the current stocks um, are available in, in carbon, uh, carbon fiber. So um, they're quite different to this prototype, of course, but this is the, the basic shape. And what you can see here is this um, wide teardrop shaped forend but it's extra long so that you can actually put it over something and it doesn't interfere with you. You can have it over a pack or with a bipod. It's not going to make any difference. It's also got the uh, side mounted flush cups, which um, just when you're, when you're loading up a sling, if you're like me, you want to use a sling in various situations. Well, that just means you're not uh, talking the rifle over. So that's also another plus. And then also there's this um, elongated pistol grip. Note that it's not vertical. So it's, a, it's an all round design. So 
as you actually have a look at this rifle, the whole thing is an all-around design where we've got this 306 chamber which can handle both match, it can handle general hunting with factory ammunition and long-range hunting. Um, now true flight, the barrel that they've supplied is, um, is 0.675 inches at the muzzle which means that it's not a heavy weight but um, I can use this for both uh, general stalking but also long range which is just fantastic. And then you've got the stock which um, by its very shape it lends itself well to stalking and long range shooting so it's a really good all round design and I really wanted to share this with you guys because um, things like this they're just absolutely great when it all comes together you just think wow this is the rifle that, I, that I've always wanted so um, just keep projects like this in mind um, it's just such a great thing once you've got it all up and running and that 200 grain bullet man does it hit hard and in a 306 like this if you you know you get your skills together you can use this out to um, several hundred yards and of course, um, in comparison to the Creedmoor, well, ballistically, there's really no difference. The BCs are the same, and the velocities are the same once you know what you're doing with hand loads and you've got the right chamber. Um, but other than that, of course, there is a difference between the two in that this has got a, a lot more energy behind it, so when it hits, it hits extremely hard. So that's something you can uh, really enjoy uh, and make the most of. It's just it's a whole bunch of fun. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the new Remus.